Pat Narduzzi and the Pitt Panthers, a program at a crossroads, perhaps, coming off three and nine season after winning the ACC in 2021 with Kenny Pickett, going nine and four in 2022, three and nine in 2023. What's the outlook on this team heading into spring ball of 2024? We're going to talk about it. My name is Brendan Moore, uh, co host of the CFBpod.com show. And today we're just going to be going over a little spring preview for Pitt. They open spring practice Monday, March 4th. Um, curious to see a lot of things with Pittsburgh. Uh, got some storylines to go over. Got some position groups to watch. Um, some on the defensive side, some on the offensive side. So a lot to get into. And really the first storyline, I know it's kind of, kind of vague here, but is Pat Narduzzi under pressure? I think this is important to address because – he just won the ACC not too long ago in 2021. I mean, yes, it was with Kenny Pickett. It was with a super talented team and maybe in a down year for Clemson. Uh, obviously, Florida State wasn't what it is now as a program, but Pitt, they, they won the conference, made it to the Peach Bowl, lost there, but finished 11-3, and 7-1 and in conference. It's kind of been a downhill trend, 9-4 in 2022. Uh, I wasn't so concerned with that because it's just hard to win, win double-digit games in back-to-back -back seasons. But was it what I was more concerned with was three and nine this past season. And there was a lot of issues, really, right? And we'll get into some of them here because it because I mean it pertains to heading into 2024 spring ball as well. So I'll give Narduzzi credit where credit is due. Changes were made. Uh but if these changes don't work out, is Narduzzi, I'm not saying Narduzzi is gonna get fired if they go three and nine again, but there's going to be questions that are going to be asked about Pat Narduzzi and his future with Pittsburgh. I don't think he'll be fired this season, no matter what happens. Uh, but I think uh, an improvement this season would be key. Getting back to a bowl game would be huge. And after that season, kind of get back to that seven, eight, nine consistent win range, uh, you know, like he had earlier in his tenure from like 2016 or excuse me, 2015 to like 2019. I mean, Read off the win totals there. He had eight, eight, five, seven, eight. And then I would say exploded in 2021 with 11 wins, 2022, nine wins, three and nine was his worst season. So curious to see how Narduzzi and this team bounces back, but I'll give him credit. Like I said, one of the, he, there, there are some changes with this program. Cade Bell is the new offensive coordinator. Up goes Frank Signetti. He was fired. Uh, Cade Bell's coming over from Western Carolina. You know, if you look at his resume, he's super young, only 31 years old, played quarterback at Jacksonville from 2011 to 2015. Uh, rest in peace to the Dolphins football program. But uh, he doesn't have a ton of FBS coaching experience. Only coached in the FBS for one season at South Florida as an offensive analyst in 2019. Uh, was OC at Valdosta State in the past at, at uh, Western Carolina for the past three seasons. So. Uh, interested to see how he's jumping right to the power five level. So there's not really going to be a ton of learning curve in there. He's got to get after it right away. And, and uh, I'll talk about the quarterbacks later, but I think that's going to be the X factor, how well these quarterbacks work with Bell and can they improve from last season. But I'll get to the quarterbacks later because I want to go into deeper detail with that. Uh, but some of the other assistant coaches hires, uh, new special teams coordinator and tight ends coach, uh, Jacob Bernowski was the Miami of Ohio special teams coordinator. They had a really good kicker last year. Uh, so he uh, did really good with Miami special teams in 2023. So I'd, I'd like to hire Bronowski as the special teams coordinator. Uh, Tim Doust is the new defensive line coach coming over from East Carolina. Uh, JJ Laster, the new ride receivers coach coming over from Old Dominion. So four new assistant coaches. Uh, looks like... Uh, Three of them on the offensive side, Bell's a new OC, Bronowski, new special teams coordinator, but also tight ends coach, and Laster, the new receivers coach. So some change, some turnover on that offensive staff. And sticking with the offense, this is my position group to watch. It's gonna be the quarterbacks. I mean, look at the look at the stats from last year. Not a great quarterback showing uh from from anyone on this team. I mean, Dracovic was the starter heading into the season, and he Completed balls at only a 50.9% clip, 818 yards, six touchdowns, three interceptions. And he was quickly booted off the starting job, played in six games. Uh, but he was not, there was a lot of hype with him, like possible NFL draft candidate. Uh, you know, that 
people were projecting him to have a future pro career. Just didn't turn out that way. Swinging a miss there for a new, for Narduzzi and that staff with Jerkovic. Uh, but Christian uh, Veyu, he uh, completed balls at 51% clips, uh, seven touchdowns, eight picks, too many, too many interceptions. Nate Yarnell also played four games, 66% completion percentage, 595 yards, four touchdowns, one pick. Uh, he was the best quarterback that I th- I thought played last season, and obviously the stats uh, show that. One thing Dracovic did have for him is he was able to run the ball a little bit, had 60 rushing yards. Yarnell had only 13 and 19 rushing attempts, so not much of a runner uh, there. Uh, but Dracovic is gone. Veyu and Yarnell are the two guys that I'm looking at heading into spring spring camp here. Uh, I think Yarnell is going to start. Uh Spring ball as the one. We'll see as spring practices progress, and once we get to that spring game, who's going to take over? Uh, but I have Yarnell at the top of the depth chart right now. But uh, a transfer addition really is kind of a wild card to watch here. Is Eli Holstein? I uh, was a former blue chip recruit, went to Bama uh, for 2023, transferred out. He's now at Pittsburgh. I think he's an interesting name to watch. He's you know six four, two forty ish, so big guy for a quarterback. Uh, I think he's going to factor into this battle one way or another, whether it be during the season uh, or whether if the quarterback play is not good enough from Yarnell or whoever starts, Holstein could factor in to that during the season, fall camp maybe. Uh, he's in there right now for spring, so interested to see where he fits into this equation. He could he could be the second string by the time spring camp is done. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I think So I think Cade Bell's got his hands full with this quarterback battle. So I'm... I think Holstein, I'm buying Holstein stock right now. Uh, but Yarnell, I would be willing to bet, is your number one uh, heading out of spring ball and heading into fall camp. Moving over to the defensive side. The defensive line p- positions to me, whether it be defense tackle, defensive end, doesn't matter. I think these are probably the thinnest on the team, in my opinion, in terms of there's not a ton of returning guys here. There's a lot of unknowns, um, some transfers in there that'll mix in for sure. But Dayon Hayes is a guy I'm going to point to right away. I think he's going to get he's going to be one of the top players on this defense. He's a defensive end. Uh, Hayes had 45 tackles last year, 10 and a half tackles for loss, and four sacks. Most tackles for loss on the team, so I think he's uh, obviously going to be one of the top guys on this D line at that DN spot. But outside of him. I, it's going to be interesting to see who really emerges on this defensive line. I mean, the other defensive end spot uh, is Nate Matlick, who's he's, he's a transfer um, from Kansas State. Is he going to factor into this? Is Nate Temple, who's an experienced guy, been in the program for a while now, is he going to factor into this? What about Bam Brema? Is he going to factor into this? Also, another transfer I'm keeping an eye on, eye on from Clemson is David Ojigbe. Is he going to factor into this? Uh, defensive end kind of battle because it looks like there's a spot open to me. I mean, from my point of view, Deion Hayes is going to be a starter. With that other defensive end spot, it's kind of up for grabs. So I'm excited to see who kind of takes that spot and runs with it. And same thing with defensive tackle. Uh, I mean, Sean Fitzsimmons is a younger guy. Uh, I mean, he he might be a guy to watch. Uh, Francis Brew. Uh, True freshman, going to be a true freshman here. Is he, I mean, he's super talented. I'm interested to see how, where he fits into this equation. I'm not saying he's going to start because he's super young, but is he going to be sneaking into that second string? Is he going to get first team reps? I'm not sure. Uh, Nick James is another transfer uh, from Indiana. Where is he going to fit into this? So there's a lot of names, uh, Donald Elliott, Nakai Johnson. So defensive line has the names, has the bodies. Is It's just a, a matter of, who's going to emerge among that leading pack of defense alignment. So, and there's a couple other transfers throughout the defense that I'm looking forward to watching. Keith Thompson's a guy from Ohio, uh, played in the Mac, excellent player. Uh, Tamon Lynham is another name to watch, in my opinion, uh, on the back end. Uh, he's from Nebraska corner. So there's Pitt did a good job, I think, in the transfer portal. I think there's going to be, a number of different guys would be four or five ish somewhere in that ballpark. That'll be starters come, come, come the season that are from the transfer portal. So that's kind of a prediction there. I think Narduzzi did a really good job 
in the transfer portal kind of addressing those needs. So uh, if you like pit football content, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We cover pit football, we cover ACC football, we cover college football here on this channel all year round. So if you like that stuff, subscribe and like one. We'll see you in the next episode.